Today, my mind has been blown because I just got out of a meeting with my mortgage broker and it turns out the government will give you free money. And when I say free money, I literally mean the definition of almost exactly interest-free, free bloody money to buy a house. And this is the craziest thing I've ever heard of. So we're gonna go over to my computer and we're gonna break this down. Even if you live in the US, you have to listen to this. It's, it's so crazy to me that I can't believe this is the state of our economy. So come on guys. Let's jump right into it. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I don't even know where to begin with this video. My mind has been sunk into a hole of, oh my goodness, is this really what's happening? So in the States, a lot of you probably are aware that home prices have gotten quite expensive. But in the US, a nice home is probably worth between two fifty dollars and 300000 In Canada, a nice home is worth between six hundred. dollars and 800,000 even with the conversion rates guys like a $200,000 home in the states would only cost a Canadian about 280,000 not even like 260,000 something like that um, which is staggeringly different from what you're going to get in Canada now I've been really really concerned about what is going on so I'm going to read you this article and then I'm going to give you my own personal opinion on this but after I sat down with my mortgage broker and found out what it's going to take for me to get a mortgage I am honestly shocked that the government has stepped up this far to keep the uh, house Housing economy propped up. It scares me and excites me all at the same time. So let's get right into this, guys. We'll just read the first little bit here and then I'll scroll down. And we'll let's just read the full thing. I don't want to give you guys any bullshit. Let's just go through this whole thing. So eligible first time home buyers with a maximum household pre tax income of 120,000 a year. So you can't make any more than a household of 120,000 a year. So if you're married, so say you each make 50 grand a year or whatever, 60 grand a year, so long as you're under that 120, who have the minimum down payment for an insured mortgage with CMHC. So essentially, you need to be getting, you have to be approved for a mortgage from a bank. Like they need government backed mortgages for you to get this. But let's just keep going here, guys. The loan is interest free and doesn't require monthly payments. Again, just listen to this, guys. The government portion of the home shares is in rising or falling values. The loan plus any equity uplift on the portion is repayable to the government upon sale of the home or after 25 years, which is whichever is sooner. So let me keep reading. I'm sorry. I really want to interject here, but let's just read through this. CMHC said that for home buyers purchasing 500,000 new build homes, they would save up to 200, uh, $286 a month in mortgage payments. James Lear, co-founder of Red Hub Inc., the president of CanWise Financial, criticized the incentive in the media statement. He says... The key issue remains qualifying, and this program diminishes the amount that a first-time home buyer can qualify for for about 15 to 20 percent. This is because the program limits the mortgage amount for to four times the household income, whereas those not participating in the program can actually qualify for a mortgage that is 4.5 to 4.7 times their income or their household income for qualified home buyers, also capped at 120,000. Right. So those who would be attracted to the program would be Canadians who are trying to purchase uh, their. It'd be a first home they're purchasing their maximum qualification however because the program diminishes how much you can qualify for it doesn't serve the need of the group it is targeted at canadians the government of canada has allocated 1.25 billion over three years for this program for the information an example of incentives benefits can be found here and i get the point so when i sat down with my mortgage broker he says you're going to come back in september we're going to sit down and we're going to figure a plan out because i can already get qualified with a co-signer for about a three hundred fifty thousand dollar mortgage which blew my mind in the first place but she said the government, so long as you don't put a full minimum down payment, a minimum down payment is usually 20%. So if you come up with 19%, the government will match it up to 10 to 15%. So the government will give you up to 30, 40, it doesn't even work. It's a page is an error. They will literally match you up to 30 or 40,000. So if you come up, let's just take a random example here. Just say the house is worth $200,000. Not that you're going to be buying much in Canada for 200,000, but let's just be hypothetical here. Okay. So say you come up with a down payment of 20%, which would only be $40,000 on a $200,000 home. If I did the math right there, I probably did it wrong, but let's just presume it's 40. The government, so let's say instead of coming up with 40, you come up with 30. The government will now give you an extra 30 on top of that interest free. And the only time you pay them back is when you sell the home or 25 years, whatever comes first. Um, so not only is this wild, but they increased the RSP contribution limit. So the registered retiring savings plan that I just opened, you can contribute to it tax free. And now you can give yourself a loan off of it tax free. 
um, but you have to use the money. So you have to pull the money out of the account. It's it's um, it's a registered withdrawal into buying a first time home. So if you guys don't know what's going on in Toronto, this is what a home looks like in Canada. It's about two million bucks. Um, so there's no way. Look at this house. This is like a shack. For, this is probably not even like 500 square feet for a million bucks. This is the reality of the Canadian housing market currently as it stands in Ontario. And I think what is going on is the government is terrified of a recession coming. People have stretched themselves so far that new home buyers can't afford to buy a house like me. The most I can get qualified for with a cosigner is 300 grand. Well, that's a hell of a long way from 700,000. But you can still look at condos. You can still look at homes a little farther north. You can still find fixer uppers. There are options available. And as a first time home buyer, I'm kind of on the fence of whether this is a great idea or not because the way I look at it is the government's literally going to give me free money. And if I can find a condo at the right price that I can rent for at the right price, it has to be a new home. There are some stipulations that come with this, and the full stipulations come out in September, but you can only buy new homes. So you can't buy used homes. So you're not going to be buying a $2.4 million home unless it's brand new. The government only wants new homes to mitigate their own risk so i'd have to be looking at a condo because i couldn't be buying a fixer upper um it, it comes down with a lot of problems but say you look at a three or four hundred thousand dollar condo and you can rent it out if the numbers make sense obviously you're not gonna be making a lot on the equity it's just the fact that the government is gonna give you free money free money I'm like blown away, guys. Like I've been struggling to see how I can even come up with a way of buying a house. And now the government's like, you know what? Well, they don't care. You can't afford a home. We'll just give you free money. And on top of that, the interest rates right now are 2.9%. I, I, when I sat down with the mortgage broker, my jaw just hitting the floor again and again. I think the Canadian economy is so propped up that we are due for a, a, a recession with the student loans, with the fact that people are stretching themselves out to being able to afford these million dollar properties. It's just, it's blowing my mind at how far the government is willing to go to keep the entire economy propped up and keep people like me that can't afford homes being able to afford them. Literally, could you imagine a, a place where a shack, a shack cost 800,000, a one story, this is probably barely 800 square feet. Uh, oh, here's a big one for 2,000 square feet, but you're talking 1.2 million, baby, 1.2 million. The government will literally be like, oh my God, we feel so bad for these students coming out with all these student loans. They might barely be able to come up with a down payment. Here, we'll give you 30 grand. Sure, we'll let you buy a condo for 30 or 40,000. Now, in my position, I'm a little worried that the economy is going to crash, but honestly, if the renting numbers make sense and everything seems to work, Ontario is one of the fastest growing, uh, it is the fastest growing province, I'm pretty sure, in all of Canada, because since uh, 20 years ago, the population has increased by 50%. But the reason these home prices have become so out of whack is because of foreign home buyers. Uh, we had a big issue with the government allowing people in China to buy homes here. And in 2016, when housing went on a crazy run, there was a lot of people getting pushed to their limits because of foreign home buyers um, basically running these property values up. And now we're in a situation where the government is so worried that the economy isn't going to be able to grow and people aren't going to be able to afford to buy these homes that we might end up in a situation where homes might deflate a little bit. And these home prices are also propped up on the fact that tenants, um, there's been an oversurge of renters like myself that would be renting rather than buying. Now, I'm not looking for a place to live in. I am under the mindset of Grant Cardone. I do not want to buy a home. I do not want to buy a house to live in. I want to buy a condo to rent, and I would rather rent where I live. I would honestly rather rent a basement apartment for a thousand bucks and own a condo that somebody was paying me $2,200 a month to live in. So that way, that condo is getting paid off, and I might pocket my five or six percent, which will help me toward renting where I'm renting. I want the luxury of rent. I do not want the headaches of owning a home where I have one tenant where I'm going to have to like do the long. If you own three or four properties, don't get me wrong, and maybe they're duplexes, you're not doing anything wrong, guys, um, because at that point, it's worth getting a property manager and all that stuff. But in Canada, I just look at it as I'm not going to be making any money on a $200,000 home. I'm going to be renting it for nothing. I'm going to be the one shoveling the, the bloody driveway and dealing with the maintenance. I don't want that headache in my life, especially because I'm not going to be living in the home. But I can't also help the fact that the government's going to fork me over forty grand. That really um, changes a lot. Now, obviously, the economy could head in recession and we could see housing prices fall. But again, I just have to run the numbers. If I can find a way to make 5 or 6% on a brand new condo, all these new condos going up in the city and just try and find the right deal, I don't think I could do too bad. Obviously, you might have troubles finding tenants. I'm going to save up an emergency fund, obviously, just in case I run into issues. But this is a new opportunity, guys. And this is something that I'm just putting out here today because I only just found out about it. And... Um, 
Oh boy, I'm gonna have to sit down and make a full video on all of this. Uh, this is just because I'm in between jobs. I just had to make this video because it's blowing my mind right now that the government's gonna give you free money to buy a house. Like they're gonna match your payment so long. Literally, you could have 200 grand in the bank and you're like, you know what? I don't wanna put 200,000 into a mortgage. I'm only gonna put the minimum down payment. I'm gonna put less than the minimum down payment because what do you need for a down payment? 20%, I'm only gonna put 15% because the government's gonna match me 15%. So I'm still gonna be able to put 30% down and it won't even be my own money. Um, it's, could you imagine saying that in the US? Think about that. If you live in the US, you're one of my US watchers, just imagine saying that. Like for me to say it doesn't sound real because it, it, especially at interest rates at 2.9% fixed for 25 years. <laughs> I thought I was never gonna be able to afford a home, guys. And after doing all these meetings, my mind has been blown. Next week, I'm going to sit down. I'm going to do a full analysis on everything I've learned and hopefully share it with you, my Canadian viewers, and hopefully you guys in the U.S. learn something from this because the Canadian housing market is in such a crazy, crazy, crazy thing right now, guys. And to try and buy a home as an investment property, I think you're insane right now unless you're renting it and you can make the numbers work, but it is not easy. Honestly, even at $2,000 a month rent for a little house like this, guys, if you can rent it out by room, maybe, I don't know. It's just the numbers don't make sense here, guys. Every time I run numbers, I always find out that you're not making any more than the mortgage payments are, which you have to make at least 6%. Do not buy properties that don't cash flow at least 6%, guys. Uh, just listen to Grant Cardone. Don't buy homes to live in. Rent where you live and own where you rent. Um, that is my motto, guys, and I'm sticking to it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, slap a like. Uh, this video needs to get ranked, guys. I, I can't believe the government's going to be giving free money starting in September. I'm working my ass off now to bank as much as I can deferred into an RSP and they're also increasing the RSP limit up to this point the RSP limit you could withdraw on to buy a first-time home as a first-time home buyer was only 25,000 and now they're putting it up to 35,000 so if you make 40k a year you could defer hundred percent of it into your RSP and then take a loan out against yourself match it with the government's money and just buy fucking house oh my god guys stay cool stay awesome I look forward to chatting to you real soon